Hey guys, Small Kiwi here with an in-depth look at the recently released indie medieval slasher War of the Roses here on FPS General. Developer Fat Shark has returned to the partnership with Paradox Interactive Publishing that brought us their first underappreciated title, Lead and Gold. Now, two and a half years after the release of that game, comes War of the Roses, a multiplayer third-person melee combat game in the vein of Mountain Blade Warband and predecessors like Age of Chivalry. Now, before you finish typing up that 500 character thesis on why a channel named FPS General shouldn't be covering a game like War of the Roses, please watch this. Headshot! 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 I think you get the idea. War of the Roses is set in 15th century England, which is a perfect setting because technologically it includes most of the advancements in weapons and armors one might expect, short of gunpowder weapons. You'll have access to leather, chain, and plate mail, and weapons ranging from crossbows and longbows to swords, maces, pole arms, and two-handers. Like the combat system of Mountain Blade, melee weapons can be readied for a strike in one of four directions, and likewise, defenders may parry in those directions to try and gain advantage over the attacker. One of the more unique aspects of War of the Roses is the class customization feature, which gives players the ability to customize the characteristics of their gear similar to the weapon progression system in Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Customizations available include various blade edges, fighting styles, helmets, shields, and armor appearance. This makes for a fairly deep melee fighting system in which you are unlikely to go up against players using the exact same equipment as you. Knowing the strengths and weaknesses of particular armors or weapons is a real advantage that you can capitalize on in a fight. For example, the front plate of the medium armor plate Quivas, covering the chest, is more difficult to penetrate than the chainmail elsewhere, so whenever possible, strikes should be made toward the enemy's back, legs, and arms. War of the Roses currently features two game types, Conquest and the ubiquitous Team Deathmatch. In both game types, downed players lay on the ground for a time to either be revived by a teammate or executed by an enemy. This makes for interesting choices during the game, because either reviving or executing leaves the player vulnerable for as much as 5 seconds. During that time, they can be interrupted by an arrow or melee strike, so players really have to be sure they are safe before committing to either. Conquest is played with teams vying for control of points on the map, which can only be captured in sequence. To my disappointment, there is only ever one point at a time in contention, unlike the Arathi Basin in World of Warcraft, for example, where all points can be controlled at any time by either faction, which seems to produce a more dynamic experience match to match. Good news, however, especially for those of you who remember the lack of post-release support that Let It Gold received, Paradox recently announced that a permanent franchise team for War of the Roses had been formed to quote, continue to improve the game and add substantial content for all players. We can also assume this means sequels in the future, which I can honestly say I'm excited about. We see a lot of iteration in the standard first-person shooter formula, while melee combat games have been few and far between. It's by no means a saturated market, so I'm really excited to see what can be improved upon within the genre. If you're new to melee combat games, you might find War of the Roses difficult to jump into. To make the transition easier, you can choose to focus on using the bow or crossbow and try picking off enemies from a distance, but you'd be missing out on a lot of what the game has to offer. The starting footman class is not a bad choice, as the shield will give new players a lot of survivability if they learn to time their blocks and make opportunity attacks on their opponents. Just remember that slashing attacks with one-handed swords are extremely weak against plate mail, so aim attacks for exposed flesh, weaker chain mail, or focus on thrusting attacks that will pierce heavy armor. After unlocking the Foot Knight class, don't be afraid to test out the survivability that plate mail provides. A lot of slashing attacks will simply bounce off this behemoth, but watch out for thrusting pole arms and swords, which will pierce reliably, as well as axes and blunt weapons which will deal considerable impact damage, regardless of armor type. To better deal with heavy armored opponents, try switching to the blunt face of your poleaxe, that's the Q key by default, and going to town. Just focus on gauging the distance to your opponent, as you won't deal any damage if the head of the weapon isn't making contact. Oh, and don't forget to drop that visor, that's the V key, to protect your face since it's both the most exposed for slashing attacks and the most damaging location to be hit. 
Once you unlock a custom class slot, you have a lot of options available. You may be tempted to pick up a suit of plate right away, but the quickness afforded by wearing medium or light armors can make up for the difference if you understand how to move in a fight. Against foes wielding pole arms, don't be afraid to get in tight to avoid the damaging head of the weapon, and make use of sidestepping to dodge from thrusting attacks. If you choose to go this route, you might consider a shorter weapon, such as the Warhammer, Executioner's Axe, or Horseman's Hammer and Shield. These weapons all excel at minimum range, and can deal damage to any type of armored opponent. You can even unlock mounts and lances and take your chances riding down opponents in the open field, but remember that this won't be useful on every map. Lastly, don't be afraid to experiment. There is no one right way to play the game, and you never know what weapon might feel best to you until you try it. Once again, my name is Small Kiwi, and I want to thank you for watching this War of the Roses video overview. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe above and like it below. Leave a comment beneath the video letting us know what you thought, or if you have more tips we should include in a future show. Visit our website at fpsgeneral.com, and you can check out some of our other great shooter content on our channel right here.